This is the New Zealand TT for the sidecars. Um, we've got going with Steve Bryan now. Uh, we saw a mechanical issue there with the um, Colin Buckley machine. In fact, I think that's Colin Buckley's father just sitting there. Hey, oi, I know Mr. I know wrong with it. Mr. Buckley, right in front of us. You've got <laughs> the same shirt on as me. That's a fashion clash. In fact, I think Colin Buckley bought them both back from the Northwest 200 a couple of years. His is a lot fatter than mine out the sides. Mine's a bit fatter in the front. Anyway, let's get on with Colin Buckley had an issue there and struggled to finish. Yeah, that's the uh, third time they've broken the gear lever. It's um, built a little bit light for a World Championship outfit, and they've had to brace it up with some bolts and weld some stuff on the side of it, and yeah, it should last them this time, hopefully. Now, well, the main thing is they didn't uh, didn't blow anything up and haven't been sort of sidelined, and also they've taken the New Zealand Superbike Championships in the sidecar class. Yeah, I thought it had a misfire earlier, but it turns out they were bouncing off the rev limiter in second gear to get it try to uh, maintain second place, but uh, they won't have to do that this time, hopefully. All right, the number 93 bike started uh, the New Zealand Championship season with Aaron Lovell and Tracy Bryan uh, right here, and then they went down to... Uh, Invercargill and had a big crap to scratch in that sideline up, but they brought the machine back to uh, Timaru levels and uh, Andy Scrivener and uh, Steve Bryan who I'm talking to come down and race that machine. That's the first time you've been on a long bike and uh, I know Scrivy had said for, for just about ever that he'd never go near what we call a long bike and uh, how did he enjoy that? Oh, he liked it more than he'd let on. Um, it, yeah, it was very easy to do the pace we were on with the short bike. You know, we were on the same pace we used to be on, but it was half as hard to do it. So I can see a future with him somewhere. For Scruffy and for I. No, OK, we have to give him a bit of a tease. But right now, out in the front, that 93 machine is uh, leading on the track. And the Carl Cox Motorsport machine, the 18 bike in behind. I expect to change in a little bit. But, it, but, but I'll tell you what, this guy Bygraves is... Uh, I've never seen him on a bike before, Ben Bygrave, never even heard of him before and he was out there leading and as I say that I think there's a change of position, they've been shunted down but he tried back up on the inside, how did he do that? I thought once Colin Buckley got in the front he'd just drive it like anything but uh, he fights back on the inside, very experienced passenger on the side of this machine and it is the uh, last year's New Zealand Superbike champion winning uh, passenger in the form of Stu Dawes there on the uh, bike in number uh, second spot. But that was a great pass on the inside too by Colin Buckley. Good solid ride there for Pete the Pirate on the one on one machine, Steve. Yeah, this is Ben Bygrave's first day on the bike, so they've been uh, they've been polishing it up and um, and getting getting the handling to suit him. Um, he's a different shape to Aaron Lovell and to Andy Scrivener as well. So they've been, I was talking to uh, Fred earlier and they've been doing a lot of adjustments and clearly it's paying off because um, their pace is obviously ramping up. They're right up there with Colin and Robbie. All right, and we've seen a battle all season long between the number 14 bike and the number 49 bike, and uh, certainly uh, it's not uh, stopped at all at the moment. Both Cantabrian teams. We've got number 14 with Alex McDonald and Adrian Gorse sitting on the side, and the 49 bikes piloted by Warwick Dimmicks and Will Climo. Warwick Dimmicks was the passenger on this machine for a number of years, so knows all about it, and then when uh, Dave and Ann sold the bike, uh, he ended up in the pilot seat, and we see them coming out of the airport. In fact, was that a touch? as Alex gets more of a drive out there, the 72-year-old. He's the uh, fastest man in New Zealand. The, uh, sorry, not the fastest man, the oldest man in New Zealand to get for, for getting uh, done for loss of traction. The boy racer rules. I mean, any conviction's a bit of a sort of a shameful thing, but I don't know whether that one is. It's, uh, and he's as strong as an ox. He's a shearer. I think many years shearing in that at 72. He'll give a lot of the young fellas a run for the money. The battle out there in the front's absolutely outstanding. Normally, Colin Buckley is has cleaned away at this season there and set lap records at every track he's been to in the New Zealand Superbike Championship on this beautiful LCR, but he's having it a hard way. In fact, it's sliding out of the hairpin there at the Pepsi Max corner, and uh, Bygraves there and uh, Stu Dora right in there behind the tail. So uh, are they just putting on a show here, or do you think this guy Bygraves has got a future in sidecar racing? Oh, well, I, don't I think he has. I don't think there's any show going on there. I think it's, uh, it's all for the, for the uh, numbers at the end. Uh, there's definitely, that's not a game. Uh, I was talking to Tracy earlier. She was um, having trouble with the uh, LCR of Spike Taylor's uh, earlier. It was really dodgy under brakes. So we've made some adjustments to that. And um, it looks a bit more stable now. So um, she's uh, starting to get into the back of uh, Dave and Tony now. Interesting looking at the fastest lap times. Colin Buckley had put in a 109.59 fire. And just about eight thousandths of a second slower was... Uh, Stu Dorr and Ben Bygrave with a 
Yeah, but it is changeable. But still, it's a, a in fact, look at it. It's a 109.595 for Stu Dor and Ben Bygrave and a 109.546. We're only look, talking 50 thousands of a second. And this is the first weekend on a sidecar for Ben Bygrave. So, wow, that's absolutely sensational. We saw this machine that Colin Buckley rides um, break the lap record, I think, by three and a half seconds here at the Suzuki Series in the sidecar class. How did it do that? Well, it's a very, very exceptional machine, but we also had six times world champion uh, uh, come out there and show us how it was done. And six times world champion on that bike and uh, absolutely sensational. Mark Wilkes was the passenger on that bike and uh, Mark got a broken neck in a road accident. Uh, how's Mark going? You would have kept up with him? I saw he had his brace off and gone back home. Doing all right? Yeah, last I heard of him, he was at the... Um the uh, do for the uh, Southern 100 and he had his brace off and he's receiving his award for uh, winning the Southern 100 in the UK. Right, six laps to go. That ding-dong's on. Alex McDonald got out in the front of that ding-dong between the 14 and 49 bike. In fact, when they would come over the start-finish line, he probably had 80 metres. And now it is Warwick Dimmick's bout in the fact... I'll just wind that back. Out in the front of those two bikes as they come round the middleman corner. We see Pete the Pirate on the MC2XS prepared 111 machine here in a good solid third spot. The battle is on for fourth, and it is Dimmick's with Climo on the side. It's a change of position there. We saw Alex. Alex had a motor change this weekend. Was that bike slowing a little bit, maybe, Steve Bryan? Sorry, about Did that bike slow a bit there? Oh, yeah, I think he got a bit sideways coming over the top of the hill, and that just slowed him down for a second. But, uh, no, he's still back on it again. And Dave MacArthur on the uh, 67 machine coming through there from... Yeah, the that's uh, Dave MacArthur's on the only bike out there at the moment that's not an LCR. It is um, Swiss-built uh, machines. They're a beautiful machine, the LCRs. But Dave's is made of... Uh, Tubular, tubular material wrapped in carbon fibre. Um, it was a great bike in the day. It's getting on now, but um, yeah, the only bike out there not to be an LCR. Well, Colin Buckley got the break on the uh, team on the 93 machine in the last lap, but it's uh, in fact the fastest people, the fastest lap of the race. Stu Dor and Ben Bygrave. Ben Bygrave doing the riding, so they've dropped into the 108. So 108 and a half, absolutely sensational. Colin Buckley can only pull a 109.1, so that 0.6 of a second quicker. So, oh, wow, it's, where are they on the track? They'll be coming out of the Pepsi Max corner. It still is the 18 machine coming across the lapper there. I suspect that lap, lapper, Dave MacArthur, will be uh, maybe an issue there coming into the metal man corner. But certainly the Bygraves machine lifts aside. I haven't seen a sidecar lift that much for a long time in that dipper there, but... Um, Buckley disappears off in the distance, but 0.8 of a second quicker, I think, for that uh, number 93 machine. Yeah, they go round the back market quite a, quite easily. Robbie Shorter doing the swinging for Colin Buckley, got round there with ease. And uh, the next team there on the 93 bike, the back market did everything they had to do. The 93 machine got to, so they're going hunting them down. Head shape there coming over the hill for the machine. They are just pushing harder and harder. We've got to now check the lap times, and uh, it still is. Stu Dor doing the passion for Ben Brygraves, the fastest people on the track. The last lap time was a 108 and a half. In fact, a 1086. And Colin Buckley put in a 10, uh, sorry, 1.10.2. So 0.4 of a second quicker. Three, uh, three laps to go here for the New Zealand Sidecar TT. And then we go for round three of the races today. And round three will be Super Sport 600, lightweight and 250 production. Superbike and Superstock. Sidecars, 650 Pro Twins, and the Super Lights uh, at the end. And the 650 Pro Twins will also include the uh, include the 125 GPS. Close right up there, Steve Bryan. Close right up. There's only three bike links in as they go out of the dipper there. And these things are matched for speed. It's, uh, wow, sensational. Normally it's just been Colin Buckley disappear. Yeah, Watch the speed of this bike race coming it'll around. It'll be anyone's race. On the inside. Wow! Yeah, it's anyone's race at this point. The, um, the Aaron Lovell bike's got a much heavier fairing on it. I know it weighs about 15 kg more because it's got a lot of repair in it. Um, but, yeah, Ben's probably on the worst bike of the two, but he's certainly uh, making good there, isn't he? <laughs> Mate, I've been watching the sidecars over the season, and it's been relatively processional most of the way through, but what a change of the books. And a uh, 109 109.12, 109.12, so... 0.8 of a second quicker this team is than the Buckley machine. I actually thought earlier on that Buckley and Shorter were just playing with these boys. They wanted the TT title. They get them up round and sort of put a bit of a show on for the crowd. 
but right now it's not happening. A big slide for the number 93 machine coming out of the Pepsi Max corner, but they've broken away. There's now probably 20 bike links between first and second place. We're still going to have a look at that battle going in the middle man corner. Warwick Dimmicks takes the outside line. They're side by side. Alex McDonald on the 14 machine on the inside, but they're closing up. There's two bike links in it, one bike links in it. They've been battling out for the whole damn season like this. There's about 30 years difference and about 30 kilos difference of weight between the two riders as well. Yeah, those guys have done a lot of racing together too. They're both Ruapuna boys and um, they've done a huge amount of laps side by side, so I don't think they're too worried about each other. Yeah. Here we go, the final lap of the New Zealand Superbike TT for the sidecar class here at Hampton Downs. And uh, Colin Buckley's had a clean sweep all the way through the season until last race where he um, had a mechanical issue and settled for second. He's got to reel him in. They're coming across back markers. They're out of sight at the moment through the Hamilton Ashfield's corner. There's the two back markers, those Cantabrians. Well, if these guys are side by side, it's going to be very, very hard for the two lead bikes to come past them. And uh, it's going to be a hell of a lot of fireworks. There we go. Alex McDonald in the front, Will Climo doing the pastry. That 93 bike's got past both those bikes. Colin Buckley's coming up on the inside. OK, the back markers weren't an issue. They're having their own battle, but uh, Colin Buckley gets a big slide coming out. Well, not a big slide, but enough to lose attraction. Ben Bygraves, I mean, you're a legend. I don't even know what you look like. And uh, I bet he's got his race face on now. And I know Stu Dawes is an absolutely sensationally reliable passenger. And the man I'd pick to swing for me around somewhere like this. Here we go. Coming over the hill. First time on a sidecar this weekend. How do you do it, especially with the talent like Colin Buckley and Robbie Shorter there? Wow, that's absolutely excellent. And there's the battle for uh, further down the line. They've been lapped, but it is. Alex McDonald goes through there and takes the better of uh, Warwick Dimmicks and uh, Will Climo on the number 49 machine. Going all the way, I think it's Tim McArthur, uh, Dave McArthur, sorry, and Tony New will come around in third place on the track. No, Pete the Pirate. Where's Pete the Pirate? There he is, Pete the Pirate. Sorry, it's third. He's coming into the dipper, so uh, they'll, they'll get a good, solid third place. So sidecar racing, oh, that's great. And uh, I wonder what sort of bruises Tracy will have this weekend uh, being on the different sort of bike. Well, you know, she's ridden, sol uh, she's ridden short bikes. She's ridden 600. She's ridden now the long bike. She's passing a different set of bruises. She must have every square inch of her body bruised sometimes. Oh yeah, no, she, she dropped them where uh, Spike Taylor jumped out. If you saw them side by side, the one's about twice as big as the other. And um, she just slotted in. I think she's sitting at, at a different height in it. And um, she's just got her shoulders on the ferrig. And now she's happy as in that thing. Uh, changed the gears, gear lever and brake lever around. And she just slotted straight into it. All right, and thank you very much for your expert uh, assistance, Steve. It's nice to see someone.